Today we'll be retelling the story of Call of Duty World War II, a game that I played very little when it was released, but I do remember the story being all time great, especially for a Call of Duty game. The acting was top notch and the brutalities of war are shown in a gritty and gruesome way. Thank you for joining me today and let's begin. On June 6, 1944, United States Army Private First Class Ronald Red Daniels of the 1st Infantry Division takes part in the Storming of Normandy, better known as D-Day. He, alongside his platoon, which consists of Private First Class Robert Zussman, Private Drew Stiles, Technician 5th Grade Frank Aiello, Technical Sergeant William Pearson, and First Lieutenant Joseph Turner. As they prepare for what's to come, they realize that they are about to be late for a briefing and they get chewed out by Sergeant Pearson. Briefing's about to start. What the hell are you boys doing? Then there's Sergeant Pearson, a real sweetheart. Well, you think you're special, huh? The Krauts are going to eat your lunch. No, not our lunch, Sergeant. Our lunch is secure. Watch your lips, Usman. On me. Since I'm obviously on a lucky streak, whatever happens, stay close. First Normandy, then the Rhine. We got this, Daniels. Here we find Commander Davis giving a powerful speech about the sacrifices that these men are making. Today, with our allies, we embark on an operation of unparalleled importance to establish a beachhead at Normandy and roll back the German aggression that has terrorized Europe for the past five years. We are all that separates the world from darkness. This, so much more than a chance to be heroes in our own lifetimes. If we prevail, our triumph will be etched into the hearts and minds of a grateful world for untold generations. I'm talking about glory, gentlemen. True glory. During the storming of Normandy, Daniels realizes how brutal the war truly is, as he sees many of his friends being killed. And as they continue to push forward, Daniels is ambushed by a Nazi soldier, but his friend Zussman comes to save him before he is executed. However, Zussman suffers a wound and is momentarily incapacitated. Daniels drags Zussman to safety and the United States takes over Normandy, pushing the Germans back. And about seven weeks after D-Day, the teams are preparing for Operation Cobra, where allied forces look to reclaim the town of Marigny. Zussman returns to the platoon, although he is still a bit hurt, but he wants to show Pearson and the rest of his guys that he can still help and continue to push. Glad to have you back, Private. Good to be back, sir. All right, fellas. We got a unique opportunity here. This is our chance to break out of Norman. It won't be easy. The hedgerows are heavily defended. We got reports of crowd armor in the area. If we can hold and secure Marigny, we own the roadways. And if Zussman can take a knife in the gut and come out swinging, I like our odds just fine. I always bet on a winner, sir. You know, a wound like this takes eight weeks to heal. I'm ready, Sergeant. You've got my word. Oh, your word. That don't mean shit to me. So you're good, huh? I'm just fine and dandy, sir. You got guts, Private. I just don't want to see him. They successfully take the town back, and after some close calls with Sergeant Pearson, Daniels begins to see how ruthless Pearson can be on the field firsthand. Watch out! Wings on me, Private! No, Sergeant. That's because I'm not your very fucking godmother! God damn it! I just lost two good men in there! Now we gotta pull it together and take out those guns! Come on! 
A few weeks later, a joint operation was ordered between the United States and the British Special Forces, which consisted of Major Arthur Crowley and Vivian Harris. The mission was to intercept a British train that was carrying V-2 rockets near Argentin. We heard about Marigny. Impressive. I can't take all the credit. Just doing our job. And a fine job it was, but a warm-up, I'm afraid. Look, this is no ordinary German supply train. It's a fortress on wheels. A liaison in the resistance, Rousseau, will provide support if possible, but attacks on their network could mean we're on our own. The fate of Paris is in your hands. The teams push quietly until their cover is blown. Here, Daniels and Sussman chase the train, carrying the rockets until they are able to stop it. Daniels and Sussman fight their way through injured Nazis and they are eventually escorted back to their platoon by a French resistance leader named Camille Rosu Denis. Overall, the operation was a success, and about a week later, Rosu and Major Crowley infiltrate a German garrison in Paris to retrieve explosives that they will use in an attempt to liberate Paris and kill the Germans occupying it. During the infiltration, Rosu is almost caught by the man that killed her family. She fights him off and she kills him. After this, she retrieves the explosives and plants them alongside Crowley in the German garrison. Once this completed, Daniels and his platoon are able to push the garrison and kill the Nazis inside. The team would hold their positions and fight against reinforcements, and eventually they would make the Germans retreat, and Paris would be liberated. Outstanding work, boys. Outstanding. We did it. The ghost forces are entering the city. Looks like we might get that champagne and caviar after all. Hey, Daniels, you still think there's a young gal looking for a handsome GI? Sorry, buddy. That was just a boost of morale. Now he tells me. City of Lights. Finally. Something to celebrate, eh, hey, Crowley? There's no turning back. France has reclaimed Paris. Well, this ain't exactly over yet. War's not done. Now come on, Pierce, and let them have this. That's what Turner's for. Two months would go by and the fight to end the war was still going strong. Daniels and the team would be tasked with taking over a German-occupied hotel in the city of Aiken. Sounds like a kid. Daniels, you still got that chocolate bar? Yes, sir. Bet y'all are hungry. Go home. Take it. Anna! Whoa, 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 whoa! It's all right! It's all right! We're not gonna hurt you. We're not gonna hurt you. No food. M my sister. Please. Help us. No, no, no. Kraut reinforcements will be here any minute. We don't have time to be babysitting civilians. There's only two of them. Sir, you better come see this. Ah, oh, just perfect. Shh. We passed that truck a few hundred yards back. We can drive it here and we can get them all out. With all due respect, our mission was to secure this hotel. Sagen Sie, wir haben Verwundete. Die werden es nicht schaffen. Ich rufe sie an. Ich spreche kein Deutsch. Keine Sorge, alles wird gut. 
You speak German? When the hell were you gonna tell us that? I wasn't. All right, we're gonna get these people out of here. Here, Lieutenant Turner orders their evacuation. However, Pearson is weary of this as he is focused on their mission. And after sending Daniels with Aiello to retrieve a truck to load up the civilians, they realize that Anna has gone missing. Turner gives Daniels two minutes to go and find her. When Daniels does this, he picks her up and brings her to safety, while avoiding capture from the Nazis that occupied the hotel. Was soll das? Du wollt wieder aufkommen? Gossmann, Müller, wir werden angegriffen. Rauf, sofort. Wir suchen nach jemandem, der hier entlang gelaufen sein muss. Geh hoch und sag kurz, dass wir Hilfe auf der Südseite des Hotels brauchen. Schnell! Bewegung! Verstanden! Ha, was ist denn das? Wir werden angegriffen! Jawohl! After taking out the Nazis, Turner wants to escort the civilians to safety, but Pearson pushes back on that. They shot up the truck! She's gone. Go on! Go! What the hell are you doing? Following orders. Everyone back to the hotel. Move, move, move! Hey, there's nothing we can do. After this, both Pearson and Turner have to deal with Commander Davis. Your orders were to take the hotel, not evacuate civilians. Who decided this was a rescue op? We thought there was time, sir. Last time I checked, Turner was in charge, not you. Is he making the calls now? No, sir. It was my call. It's on me. It's on both of us. Yeah, well, right now, the last thing I should be worried about is if two of my best men can follow orders when we're on the verge of the biggest operation of the entire war. Let me remind you, this is the spearhead of our final drive to the Rhine. Got a whole damn forest to clear so the convoy can get through. So from this point on, I'll accept nothing less than your best. Now get your insubordinate asses ready to move out. Three weeks later, Davis and Turner brief the soldiers on their next mission to capture Hill 493. Our mission is to take Hill 493. Whoever holds the hill, dominates the valley. Now for lesser men, this task might seem insurmountable, but our division boasts a proud history of firsts. In World War I, we were first to hold off a German attack, first to launch a counteroffensive, first across the Rhine. Nothing has ever stopped us, and nothing ever will. Lieutenant, tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. I can't hear you. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. That's right. Now get ready to move out. After a wave of Germans attacked the campsite where the team was staying, they began their track to Hill 493. But Turner decides to split the group into two and sends Pearson and Zussman to advance towards the hill while he and Daniels provide cover until they can regroup at the bottom. As the team battle waves of Nazis, they eventually push the Germans back and Turner and the rest of the team chase them down, but they run into a trap and they are separated and Daniels is knocked out. Sometimes later, Daniels regains consciousness and makes his way to Lieutenant Turner. Later, Turner would receive a transmission that stated that Pearson ordered an attack on the hill before they could regroup with the rest of the platoon. This angers Turner and he quickly makes his way to Pearson and when they arrive, Turner confronts Pearson. How many casualties? We executed the mission. How many? Our instructions were to take this hill. You should have waited for there us. There wasn't time. What about our- We had orders. <clears throat> the hell with our goddamn orders. Do you think I wanted any of this? We are cogs in the machine, Joseph. We start going our own way, the whole thing breaks down. When did you forget that? These are men. Our men. When did you forget? Those 150s are still firing on our position. Keep moving. We're taking them out. And after this, the platoon would continue their fight against the German. However, the Germans would respond by attacking the platoon with a tank. Daniels would make his way to the tank and try to destroy it manually. However, he is knocked back by the explosion and he finds himself in a tough situation. Uh, uh. It's okay. I've got you, son. Oh, Lieutenant! 
Ah, Ami. Verfluchten Schweine. Japanische Arschlöcher. Sie werden uns nie schlagen. Was machen Sie hier auf unserem Kontinent? Ich habe am Arsch der verfluchten Männer. Scheiße! Turner! Enemy reinforcements, fall back! I'm not, not gonna make it. Leave me. I got you! Go! Sacrifice too great. Go. Fall back! Soldier! Move! Move! Fall back! Move! 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 After the death of Lieutenant Turner, Pearson would become the new head of the platoon and he would promote Daniels to corporal and his second in command. Six weeks later after the death of Lieutenant Turner, Daniels and his buddies are sitting by a fire remembering their fallen leader. However, Pearson, who is drunk, hears and approaches them. To Turner. Turner. To Turner. Lucky son of a bitch. You're always first. All right. Keep eyeballing me. Yeah, I get your jollies tonight, boys, because tomorrow when that convoy comes through, you're gonna be on the front line defending it. And Turner's not gonna be there. Easy! Easy? You're corporal now, huh? You know, see how fucking easy it is. Go. Give me an excuse. Yeah, that's what I thought. Six years I served with them. Six. Merry fucking Christmas. The next morning, the team are attacked by Germans, and the Battle of the Bulge begins. Daniels meets with Howard, who is an American technician, but he is African-American, which surprises some of the members of the platoon, specifically Aiello. However, Howard is to help the squad contact air support to assist them in pushing back the Germans in the Bulge. After defeating the Germans, the team captures the ones left alive and transport them to a different location. Wasa, bitte. What do you want? Wasa, bitte. Here. God damn it, what are you doing with us? Lay off, Sergeant. What's that? Huh? How's that, huh? How's that work for you? Much better. You son of a bitch. Sergeant, hey, you stay out of this. Oh. Hey, stop! He's not worth it. Daniels! Don't cry out. Why'd you run? You must be hiding something. 
Son of a bitch was holding out on us. The fuck's this say? These are orders to plant explosives on the bridge in Raymagen. Ordnance is going to be loaded onto trucks five miles north of here. If I'm reading this right, it's the last bridge standing across the Rhine. Well, ain't that something, Fritz? <laughs> With this new information, the team takes out the explosives en route to the Germans. However, there are a few remaining explosives located in a Nazi air base. Pearson would order Daniels and Sussman to infiltrate the air base and find a good scouting position to cover them, as he and the rest of the team would move in through the front gate. While Daniels and Sussman provide cover, they are hit by an explosion, which puts them right in front of the enemy. <laughs> This is bad. Jewish POWs. Don't get off me, see? Stay calm, it'll be okay. It was close. Hey, okay? They captured Zussman. I'm sorry about your buddy, but we need to hit that last truck now. No. No, you're not going anywhere. Dustin was captured. This thing's first. I can't oh. leave him. Daniels would disobey a direct order from Pearson and make his way to rescue Zuzman. However, he would be ran off the road by Germans and almost lose his life. Daniels would kill a German officer as he would try to stop the truck with Zuzman in it. But sadly, he would fail. You disobeyed a direct order. Then I guess you better court-martial me. Desertion is a capital offense. So maybe I should just do us all a favor and finish the job. Sergeant! It's over. You got no place in my platoon. Get him out of my face. It's gonna be okay. Everything you could. Twelve hours later, we find Zuzman captured by the Nazis. Ich bin auf der Suche nach Arbeitern. Ich werde sie inspizieren. Wir und separat. Lose the tags. Lose them. They're after Jews. Where are the Juden? The Juden. Where are the Juden? Frag mich doch, du Nazi Stück Scheiße. Du sprichst Deutsch. Ausgezeichnet. Welche sind die Juden? Fick dich. Zeig sie mir! We're Americans, period. Verfrachtet sie alle auf den Zug! Wohin bringst ihr uns? Ihr seid zum Arbeiten hergekommen und das werdet ihr auch tun! Eight weeks later, Daniels is in the hospital recovering from his wounds. Commander Davis comes in and tells Daniels the true story of Pearson and why he is such a hard ass. Pearson was ordered to retreat, but some of his men were trapped in the pass. He couldn't bring himself to fall back without them. But he ended up just losing more trying to save him. It's never been the same. But you don't need to worry about Pearson. You're headed stateside. After this, Davis informs Daniels that he will be sent home on an honorable discharge and even receive a bronze star. He would be considered a hero back home. However, Daniels feels guilty about Zussman and he cannot bring himself to leave his best friend behind. And after fully recovering, Daniels confronts Pearson in his tent. You gotta be fucking kidding me. 
I'm not giving up on Zussman. Tell it to the chaplain, because I got no room for a second. Who can't follow orders? You weren't following orders when you refused to abandon those boys at Kazarain. What did you just say to me? You heard me. You better leave while you can still walk. Davis told me it wasn't your fault. You were only trying to do right by your platoon. Get out! Get out! I'm not going anywhere. I said get out! Ugh. 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 God damn it! My orders were to fall back. But I just couldn't leave him. I told my men we were going to hold this pass until reinforcements got here. But they never came. They never came. So I guess you're right. I did get my men killed. No go. Not without my platoon. <sighs> you think you got some guts, don't you? Try getting the job done day in and day out while your men are dying all around you. Turner would have never given up like Turner this! Turner is dead! Then make that mean something! No sacrifice too great! You don't know anything about sacrifice! How about this? Honorable discharge papers signed by Davis. My ticket home. I could have had everything. A hero's welcome, my girl in my arms. Hell, even a bronze star. But I got one last mission. You must be crazy. Crazy ain't the half of it. All right, fall in. Sergeant? I said fall in, goddammit. You want in, now's the time. Get the fuck out of my way. I guess the gang's all here. Not all of us. Let's take that bridge and find our boy. Yes, Corporal. The team would successfully capture the last bridge over the Rhine, and this allowed the platoon to head into Germany. The team would receive news that POW camps were nearby. However, they would be told to wait for authorization before liberating them by Commander Davis. However, Pearson didn't care about this, and he alongside his men went to liberate the camps to free those captured and find Zussman. After leaving the bridge on our mission east, we searched camps along the way. I thought I knew what cruelty was. I didn't know anything, but one thing's for certain, what I saw will stay with me forever. Survivors said that the other POWs, including Zussman, had been taken to a smaller camp three hours east. All I could do was hope he somehow made it. This looks more like a labor camp. Come on. I get the feeling it's deserted. It's still burning. They must have just left. There's a barracks over there. Daniels. 
You and Styles check it out. Aiello, with me. These were our guys. Take out your camera. The world's got to know. They had them living worse than animals, from the looks of it. They were beaten, starved, and worked to the bone. The Nazis had murdered our boys in cold blood, and no fire in hell could burn away the stain. I'm guessing they made an example out of them. They'd slaughtered the weakest, anyone that was slowing them down. Daniels, over here. During their exploration of the POW camp, it would be revealed that the camp survivors were sent on a death march. The team quickly made their way into the woods to see if they could find and save any survivors. Eventually, Daniels is able to find and save Zussman before he is executed. Is it over? I must be dreaming. What did they do? Thought you were left behind. I may die alone out here. Drink some. Easy now. Okay, come on, let's get on in. Into the Jeep, come on in. General, general, general. You always looked out for me, Paul. And I reckon you did today. Because there's only one thing that keeps you going on that long march. And that's having your brothers beside you. When history called, you answered. From all walks of life, you came to defend peace and freedom. I thank you, and the world thanks you. Wherever your path takes you, know this. You will always be amongst a brotherhood of heroes. Well, this is it, fellas. Zussman wanted you to have it. Yeah, you'll need it more than me. You got a kiddo now. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Yeah, you'll be fine. Gentlemen. Queens! Your prodigal son returns! <laughs> oh, are you gonna be okay? Gotta say about his husband. Sergeant. Going home, Sergeant? I am home. What about you? You gonna re-up? I've been away from Texas for a long time. You take care of him, boy. I will. When my son asks what I did, I'll tell him I fought with the first. And that crazy bastard Pearson. <laughs> crazy ain't the half of it. If you're ever in Chicago, <laughs> I'll get there. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll surprise you in Longview first. You're welcome anytime. You know. When they captured us, it wasn't just our freedom that they took. Even though we were together and we were alone, looking for any way to survive. But you, you could have gone home a hero. Why'd you come back? I saw that life. Just couldn't live it. World War II is a game that went back to its roots at a time where futuristic tales and exosuits were all the rage. I think World War II can be looked at as the true modern soft reboot of Call of Duty as it released two years before Modern Warfare 2019. However, the game was controversial and split the fan base. Some would go as far as to say that it was hated, but that's a tale for another day. And I can truly say that this game felt like a masterpiece to me in its storytelling. And I hope you guys enjoyed this as we went back to one of the darkest times the world has ever seen.
The dream was different last night. This time we made it home together. I can still hear the wolves, Paul. Sometimes I still see them coming. But you showed me how to fight them. So this belongs to you. Because the sacrifice you made taught me that a hero will risk it all to save his brother. And you'll always be both to me.